morning floss tube. It's been a while since I've been here with you guys. And uh, my name is Becky, and this is the Socks for Mom channel. Um, this podcast is mostly about stitching and knitting and quilting and other crafty things that I do. It's been a while since I've been with you. Um, it's kind of like a phone call to a really good friend that you've let a little bit of time slip and there are more and more things you want to share, yet you start to get overwhelmed because there's so many things and so you avoid um, calling. And that's kind of what I feel like today, but today is Valentine's Day and a little bit of self-love for me is I have picked out three eat that frog things that I need to do this morning before the day, before lunchtime gets here. And I just thought that if I got those things cleared off my list, I would feel a whole lot better. And I already do because two of them have been checked off and this is the last one. If you're not familiar with that book, Eat That Frog, uh, Gulf Coast Stitcher um, talked about it. It is a book, a motivational book, that basically the premise is whatever is dragging you down, do that thing first thing in the morning. And that's something my mom used to always tell me too. If you don't want to make that phone call, make it first thing in the morning and then it will be off your list. If you've got things that you don't want to do, do it. And then like on a Friday, you're dreading some of the things you have to do, do it on Friday, then you have the whole weekend to enjoy. So this podcast has just been weighing on my shoulders. Um, not that I don't want to do it, just that I have prolonged doing it, <laughs> if you know what I mean. So I'm here today and I have some things to share with you. I thought that today I would only talk about my Stitch 9 challenge that Farm Girl has inspired so many of us to do. And if you don't know about that, you pick out nine things that you have already started that you want to get done. And I actually had 10 things and I have revamped my original list because I had a few things in there that I had thrown that I had maybe only put one or two stitches in. And I thought, no, that's really not the purpose of this. I'm just going to do things I really have started. And along with that, I've joined the School of Magical Stitches and Literature, which is so much fun. That is really motivating me to work on my projects. And I'm not going to try to explain that. Um, go check out the Facebook group and join. You basically are sorted into houses and then you get homework assignments that you have to do and you get extra credit that you have to earn. Um, and today we got an alert, a basilisk alert, that a basilisk has been sighted. So we're to head to our common rooms and together as a house, we need to stitch a certain amount of stitches before Friday. And it basically ends up to be 100 stitches um, and it's supposed to be your scariest work in progress and I know what that is. Scariest not that there's something scary on it but it is a huge daunting project. But without further ado let me start sharing some of those things with you. In January I got a Lowry um, work stand I don't think you can see it. It's right here. Um, I ordered it. Let me let me hold it up for you. I love this thing. It's very portable. It was designed by some engineers, and it's basically a metal frame like this. It lengthens in and out. It goes up and down. It rotates with these levers. It has this that you can attach. Um, I got it because I had several scroll frames from the 80s that I wasn't using because they're uncomfortable for me. Um, I got this for that and I love it because it's very portable. I could 
put it next to my bed or wherever I am and work on a scroll frame. Um, I will link that site here below. I actually got it cheaper by ordering from them than I would have if I'd gotten it on Amazon. They were having a January sale and even with the overseas shipping, it was significantly cheaper. I think I paid $109 for it. Um, but let me show you the things that are on the scroll frames that are on my Stitch 9 challenge. So I'm just going to go through those Stitch 9, so I don't think this will be a very long video, which is good because it will get my feet wet again. And then I'd like to come back in a few days and show you my quilting and my knitting challenges for 2019. I've been doing them. I'm just slow at announcing them. Um, okay. So first up is, I've got all the bags right here, so I need to find the bag that that one is in. It is a Christmas bag. Um, it's this one. And it has, take this out, it has these inside is a lining. I made this around Christmas time. And what my first Stitch 9 challenge is um, Kathy Barrick's Reindeer Games. Now these aren't the order that I'm going to stitch them in. Um, these are just the order I'm pulling them out. I'm working this on 40 count Vintage Luna uh, Linen. And I actually worked on this this week in the Magical School of Stitches because we had to do a night scene. And this is a night scene. The reindeer are flying over those cute little houses down there at night. And this is what I have so far. I probably need to put something white behind that. Teeny tiny, teeny tiny little houses. And I'm doing it all in the DMC that she um, listed. So that is my first Make Nine. Sorry, I'm going to put this away so I don't have a mess in here. I'll try to be as quiet as I can. The next Stitch 9 challenge is something I started this summer. It's the Heritage Sampler by Plum Street Samplers, and it's in one of the very first bags I made, which is actually kind of flimsy. I'm making my bags much stiffer now um, with heavier vinyl and a lot of stuff in here to make them very sturdy. So, the picture of that is, I'm not going to have a picture, sorry guys, it must be in the other room, but I think a lot of you have seen it, so I'm going to just um, hold this up. Now my friend Vanessa, she whipped this out so fast, and Vanessa, I honestly don't know how you did that. There's so much detail in the, this little sampler. Um, I'm hoping to be done in the next few weeks. I'm trying to do all of my, my magical stitches challenges with this piece if it works. Um, let's see, I did, I can't remember which challenge I did, but I'm working on the White House right here. I have a saying to put down here that's all one over one. This flag down here is one over one. I have several one over one spots on this to, to do. I think I must be avoiding that, so maybe that will fit into my Magical School of Stitches somehow for the most dreaded project or something. I'll figure out a way. 
But that's been a lot of fun. I've really enjoyed it. And I am dying to get it finished and framed. I did finish the Sally Spencer and took it to a framer and we'll be picking that up in a week, I think. And I'll get to show that to you guys. That was fun to finish. All right, and my last thing that's on the scroll frame is something someone gave me in love, which is one of the main reasons I want to work on it. It's the Eleanor Taylor sampler, but I don't see the project bag anywhere. And this is what I've done. I have uh, managed to rip this out and do two over two. I started one over one, and now I'm doing it two over two. The coverage is a little bit better, and I like it better. I stitched on this. I am right now working on a challenge where I did not have all the ingredients to reverse my polyjuice potion that I had to do last week. I feel kind of silly telling you guys these, these things, but it is really lots of fun. So I had to double the amount of stitches and I'm stitching um, 400 stitches on this and I'm almost done. I've stitched all of this and this and I think I'm at 320 something right around here. Let me tell you, now that I'm counting stitches, I can't believe how many stitches are in just a little tiny section. So this is a sampler done by the Exemplar and it's hanging in the Henry Ford Museum in Dearborn, Michigan, I think. It will be very pretty when it's done. Okay, ready to move on. That's one, two, three. The, all of those are on my scroll frame, so I work on them on my, La my Lowry frame. Let's move on. This sampler is in my crown bird bag. And you may have seen Rachel um, Stitch and Be Well and Michelle talking about it, the cozy egg. We are working on this together along with some other members of our guild. We're in the Tudor Rose Guild in Dallas. It's the crowned bird sampler. I'm working mine on 36 count vintage meadow rue and I'm using silks. Now I am putting 500 stitches in this for moaning myrtle because I have moaned an awful lot about my um, sister scarlet color. In fact, I've stitched it in three different colors. I've ordered three different ones because the Sister Scarlet is pretty pink and I wanted it to be red. So this is the Sister Scarlet. Well, it looks very red right here, but it is not red. It's very pinkish. So I ordered Tulip Belle Soir. And that's what I'm stitching it in right now. And Tulip is very pretty. Well, I'm not gonna take it out. But um, it has some bright red and it also has some dark maroon in it. And I just like it a little better. So here is this. That's how far I've gotten. Now the crowns, the gold, are not showing up. And I'm going to probably end up changing that color because I want them to show up a little bit more. You see them right there. They need to show up more. So I'm moaning about that color too. So 500 stitches are going in this, but it is beautiful. I'm enjoying stitching on it. Paulette Stewart is coming to our guild 
in the um, in September, I believe. We're going to have, we're going to be, um, we have a room at the Dallas Zoo, which will be lots of fun. Okay, next up is something you guys have seen a lot of. And it is, it's in this black twall bag. And it is a long dog sampler. This is Sneak. And it's, it's, a, it's a stitch that I pick up when I don't want to work on a small count linen because it is Ada. And I'm doing this with DMC 115. And I am on the third month up there. I'm working on the third month right up here in this corner. It's, it was a 12 month clue thing um, designed by Julia Line. I do believe that she will be releasing this with a new name. And it's pretty now that I'm looking at it, I need to get back to that. I would like to finish that this year for the Make Nine Challenge. So many pretty things. I've only been back to stitching a year, a year this month, and I have fallen down the rabbit hole big time. How did I get 11 things started and not finished? I'm gonna, I've gotta get a hold of myself. The next thing I'm going to show you is in a cute little bag with some owls on it. And this bag will be going in my Etsy shop probably next week because this week I'm actually, I was going to put up some um, bags tomorrow, but I've been working on a lot of my barters that I've done. I love bartering with you guys. I have, I've done three barters, I think. Um, maybe four, and I am making bags for those ladies in exchange for something. So I have a list and I'm working down my list. This bag has this bright green inside of it. Now what I am doing different now, I've added um, D-rings where you can attach your floss if you want to. It's just something fun and whimsical. And this is the Quaker handwork. I started this last summer. It was a stitch along. I have not been working on it because I really like these colors, but the actual colors are not these colors. These are the actual colors. And I'm actually doing this as a um, memorial for my cousin who died last year. I guess it's been a year. I'm putting my mom's initials in it. They were first cousins. I'm putting her initials in it. I'm putting my, her daughter's initials, who's my cousin, and my initials on it. And her daughter sent me this from her mom. I asked her if she had some buttons, because I have a special finish I'm going to do. So she sent me these antique buttons, or mother of pearl buttons. And she sent me some lace, which is in the other room. And you will see that finished sometime this year. I actually want to get it done by um, my mom's birthday and give it to her because they were very close growing up. And 
Um, anyways, that's what I'm working on for that. Next up, this is getting very daunting now that I'm showing you all these. When I wrote it down on paper, it was one thing. Oh, here's the Eleanor Taylor bag. This is the Eleanor Taylor bag. These pomegranates, and I lined it with this pink. That's really pretty. So this is what that Eleanor Taylor will look like. Oh, and by the way, you guys asked me about this quilt that's behind me. Um, my grandmother made that. And when I was quilting in the 80s, I believe she gave it to a woman in the nursing home to hand quilt. And my grandma never put the binding around it. And she asked me if I wanted to have it. And I did. I've never put the binding on it either because it's got those scalloped edges. But I just decided I was going to hang it up on my wall and admire it. And I think a lot of you did too. It is beautiful. Let's see if I can. It's really pretty. Okay. What's in this bag? Another crown bird bag. I made four of these bags for myself to put my four samplers in. This is that thing on the wall that my husband picked out on our 35th anniversary in Tennessee at a shop there. I've told the story before. It's affectionately called that thing on the wall because when I showed him several samplers, he kept pointing to that thing on the wall. He said, I want that thing on the wall. So here is that thing on the wall. It is the His Eye is on the Sparrow Sampler by Beth Twist, Heartstring Samplery. And I am using this today as the thing that is most daunting to me because my friend Barb, hi Barb, sent me a link to a lady who had finished it. And I looked at that picture, and it's so beautiful, but I thought, will I ever get this done? So I have challenged myself this year to get half of it done and make it a two-year project. This is what I have so far. And there's the alien cow. It's beautiful. And it's a lot of fun to knit, I mean, to stitch, because you can just say, um, I'm just going to work on one motive. Now, do you see this little bluebird right here? Right there. That little bluebird, this is an example of the stitching. That little bluebird is 200 stitches, folks. Yep. Start counting your stitches and you'll see how many stitches we're putting into this. I don't, I can't even fathom how many would be in this. There's a challenge for somebody. Anybody want to start this? Count all the stitches and tell us how many stitches are in it. So that is going to come center front because every time I show my husband something, he says, but where's that thing on the wall? How's it coming along? Alrighty. Moving right along. It looks like we have three left. I spent the beginning of January working on my unicorn, which is Solomon's Temple. I believe I showed it in the last um, podcast. I started it as a high tea start, and um, I've moved it over to the Magical School of Stitches and stitched on it several times. Here's the picture, part of the picture. See if I can remember 
what and why I stitched on this. This is what I had. I think I stitched on something that sticks. Whoops, that was in the Polyjuice Potion. And I said that that thistle right there surely sticks, that Scottish thistle. So I put 500 stitches in this and then another 200, I believe. And then maybe another 200. So that's what I have. And I think I would like to get this halfway done is my challenge. It's a big girl and I don't think I wouldn't be able to stitch on anything else if I tried to get it done this year. And I'm not in a hurry for that because it's going to cost a lot to frame, right? And I'm just enjoying every stitch of it. Next up is my oldest whip. Something from the early 90s. And this is the Mother's Tree by Lavender and Lace. And all I have to do is stitch the names on it, but it's daunting to me because I have to chart all the names. So this is all I have is 1797 Elizabeth Gwen Henderson. Her husband came from Fife, Scotland, and I'm thinking she probably did too, but I'm not sure. She's my oldest ancestor in the female line because this is the mother of the mother of the mother of the mother. She's 1797. She lived in Virginia, I believe. Um, and then moved to the Carolinas. I think she came in through Virginia. My daughter, when she went to, on her trip this year, brought me back uh, the Henderson Tartan because I wanted that. My last Stitch Nine challenge is in my Houndstooth Fox bag. I will put a couple more of these in the shop next week. Very sadly, they have discontinued this fabric. Uh, and it was one of my favorite bags. Probably because of the, that color lining inside of it. So here is the village of Hawk Run Hollow. colors in it are absolutely beautiful. DMC and Needlepoint Silk. I believe I'm stitching this on Lakeside Linen Sand, whatever it called for. And these, each one of these squares is almost full coverage, so it's going really slow. I'm doing mine on 40 count. And I have challenged myself to do one block to take two months to do each block. So this will be a two-year project. So my goal for the Stitch 9 challenge is to get six of these done this year. And this is what I have so far. The other thing I'm doing is as I get to each block, like this one, I looked to the third block and I said, what NPI silks or needlepoint silks are in the second and the third block? And I bought those. When, and there were just three. When I get to the third block, I'll say, what needlepoint silks are in the third block and the fourth block? And I'll buy those. So by the end, I will have a whole bunch of needlepoint silks, but I'm mixing them. 
I'm building that church right there. So I do enjoy this. Um, like I said, it's on 40 count stitch. I mean, 40 count linen. And that is it. Right, those are all my Stitch 9 challenges. I'm looking forward to working on them. Like I said, they've all been set aside for one reason or another. And the um, Harry Potter School of Magical Stitches is getting me going on them again because who can't handle a hundred stitches on something? You know, if they say, go stitch 200 stitches on something that has something scary in it, or, um, you know, something like that. Well, 200 stitches is manageable, right? So before you know it, maybe by the end of the year, these will be complete and it just keeps the variety going. I just really am enjoying it for right now. I hope the enthusiasm will continue. A couple other things that I would like to do this year is I would like to do Plum Street Samplers, um, Hello Fall, Hello Spring, Hello Summer, Fall, Spring, Summer, what's left? Winter. And this is my new spring bag that I will have in the shop probably next week. It's really pretty. Um, those are rakes right there. Now, the other thing I did to my bags, I did put, I'm putting D-rings on them. I've also made this a little wider so you can see the fabric more than what I was doing. So I just love this bag. It's very springy. And I picked that fabric because it kind of matches this. Hello, spring. Believe it or not, things are greening up here. The grass is turning green, or I should say the weeds. The grass is starting to poke up. The trees are starting to leaf out. That's amazing to me after living 30 years in Colorado. It's not springtime there and won't be for a while. So that is an intention is to stitch these up. I'm either going to put them in a wreath that I can interchange the ribbon or I might make flat folds and just prop them up on my counter. Something else I would like to do is this is my bee bag and I'll have more of these in the shop. You get what's in there out. Usually when I kit some things up I also buy some needles. Have you guys tried these? I like them. Mary Arden's. They're made in England. This is the bee bag. Oh, I love this bag so much. And it needed something bee like, a bee project to go in it. I asked on Instagram recommendations. And I had had this on my radar these sampler lessons, the cereal bowl collection by Plum Street Sampler. Here is, here it is. Uh, let me read it to you. It says, The daily labors of the bee awake my soul to industry. So I will be doing that sometime this year. And I got all the flosses, fancy flosses for it, right here. pretty. And that's in my bee bag, the damask bee. So I don't know if I will get 
all three of these cereal bowls done, but I would like to. My daughter brought back from one of her trips when she went to Belize, she brought me this beautiful bowl. Isn't that pretty? It's hand carved in Belize. Can you see that right there? And this is the bowl I would like to put some those cereal bowl things in. And the other thing that I'm working on, this is my bag I had this fall, which I love that fabric. I'm going to try to see if I can get some more in the fall because it's really pretty. Um, I would like to do the Summer Schoolhouse series by Brenda Gervais. The first one. Here's the second one. Here's the third one. And the fourth one. So I believe there's six pillows total. I am doing it on the called for linen, which is 28 count mushroom fabric. I tried it on 46 linen and it was small, <laughs> although this is small. Now, I started it. How many stitches do you think that is? 100 stitches. One hundred stitches. Can you believe it? These will probably... That's why I did not put this on my challenge because I think these are going to take a long time. <laughs> but I'm looking forward to doing those. So those are my challenges that I'm planning on doing. I will show you what I got for Valentine's Day because today is Valentine's Day and I may have to put a stitch in this. I made the Snoopy Valentine bags, which were a lot of fun. Now, I'm gonna say something that I may regret, but I am wanting to do all the seasonal um, Snoopy bags. My husband for Valentine's Day, this is what it was lined with. My husband got me something on my wish list. Anna Grader, 1812. It's stitched on 36 count tin roof from Weeks Dye Works. And I did get that. It's just 149 stitches wide by 161 high. So it's small. The design size is eight and a half by nine. So he bought me all of the floss for it. And I'll show you the tin roof. on this really pretty so I may have to start that because my goal isn't to just work on this I've got to have some starts so I'm looking forward to that that was Anna Grader 1812 it's a scarlet house Fun. it's pretty 
So I think that is about it. I will mention that I am not sewing for the shop this week. I'm working on some barters. And I love bartering. My grandma and grandpa bartered during the depression. And although I'm not really in a depression, um, I love that because you exchange something, a skill that you have or something you have in trade to get something in return. And I just like that. Um, I like that whole, I just like that. So with that in mind, I will mention to you that if you are interested in that, if you're interested in swapping my skills for something you may have, I have a wish list on Craftsy. I mean, not Craftsy. I have a wish list on 123 Stitch. My email address is socksformum at gmail.com. I'll put that below. You can take a peek at my list if there's anything on there that you want to um, get rid of a pattern that you've stitched in exchange for a bag, you know, kind of equal monetary wise, um, whatever my bag cost is, whatever it costs, you know, my bag listing for an equal amount, kind of, I'd, be, I'd love to do a trade with you. What else can I tell you? Just contact me. Oh, I will mention that this is, this is one of my shawls that I knit. This was a mystery stitch knit along. Let's see if I have it on the right side. This is a Rosemary Hill Rami Designs pattern. And I believe I did it with Shalimar Breathless in the two pinks. I really love this. It's a lot of fun. I don't always like mystery knit-alongs because you don't know what you're going to get. But if you have a designer that you really like, and I really do like um, Rami Designs, then it's kind of a win. So thank you so much for stopping by and listening to me talk about my challenge. The next time I come back, I will show you some knitting things. I will show you my progress on my stitching, and I will show you some quilts that I have bought, some quilt kits that I want to work on this year too. My word for the year is balance. And I would like to balance out all the things that I like to do. Um, I like to do a lot of things. And I think I will, I think that will make me feel more joy if I have if I touch a little bit of everything, I guess. And speaking of joy, I hope you have a joyful day. I hope that you can look around this world that we're living in, look around at the things that you own or the people in your life and find three things that you can be thankful for today. Three things, count it all joy. Thanks for stopping by, and I will see you next time. Bye, friends.